You're listening to The Art of Mental Training, an Optimal Living interview with DC Gonzalez and Brian Johnson. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome back to the Optimal Living interview series. Today, I am really excited to have DC Gonzalez, Dan Gonzalez here with us, chatting about his great book, The Art of Mental Training, A Guide to Performance Excellence. Dan has a really fascinating background. He is a peak performer himself. Uh, He's a best-selling author, and he's been at this since 1988, helping people reach newer levels of achievement and performance. And his background includes being a naval aviator, a federal agent, a military cybersecurity specialist, and a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and peak performance coach. Um, really cool mix. Again, I loved your book, Dan, and I really appreciate, appreciate you taking the time to be here today. Thank you for having me, and it's good to be here. I really appreciate the opportunity to visit with you folks. Right on. All right, well, let's have fun and just jump straight in. So The Art of Mental Training, this is one of the best books I've read on getting our minds right. But let's just start with the most basic concept. Why is it so important that we train our minds? Well, you know, Brian, I guess uh, what I've learned throughout the years in the different um, situations that I've been in, that uh, a big part of succeeding is going to be mental. You, You know, you can develop your skills to a certain level, and so can your competitors. And uh, once uh, that level of skill uh, reaches a certain point, uh, what takes you to the next level is going to be your mental skills. Uh, You can't just depend on the physical. There has to be, uh, you have to tap an inner resource. And to tap that inner resource is, is uh, is is what gets you to the next level and what I try to teach and help people understand is that um, there's a um, there's a way of thinking there's the champion mindset if we can wrap our arms around wrap our heads around the champion mindset and how champions think and uh, and we can put those principles to work in our in our lives, then uh, we we are able to to reach a higher level beyond what our training has uh, our our skill set uh, offers us. We Love bring it. another element in. Yep, that's awesome. Okay, so then let's just go straight into that. So describe for us what a champion's mindset looks like. Well, uh, it's a combination of things. You know, a champion, he understands that attitude, the attitude that he has is very critical in that it must remain positive even when some of the things that are taking place aren't going his way. Okay, so he focuses on a, a, a control of his attitude, understanding that that's an important foundation. Now, going on from there, he also becomes aware of the importance of, of, of uh, self-talk. And all of us have an internal voice, an internal chatter that, that pops up from time to time. And champions understand that you can't have an internal critic going and running loose inside your head. So they learn to control that by interrupting that pattern and immediately replacing the negative um, talk that might be popping up with by firing off a few um, uh, positive um, affirmations, let's call them, or positive self-talk statements that immediately take the power away from the negativity and start channeling into self-confidence, self-belief, um, and, and, and correcting uh, the internal self-talk that's going on. You know, ultimately, we would like to, as, um, 
as performers not have any self-talk going on and, and, and we would like to get to the point where we're in that zone and, and that zone from where peak performance um, springs forth. But, but in order to get there, there's, there's, there's other elements of the champion mindset that, that all come together in a, in a in kind of in a synergistic way that, that leads us to that, that point where we're performing without thinking. But, you know, the champion mindset also involves um, things like um, goal setting and uh, the importance of goal setting and understanding that. Um, uh, understanding that if you, if you learn to control your, 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 uh, your breathing, um, why then you're more apt to begin to be able to control your, your mind and what's going on during um, your performance or your competition. So there's breathing, there's uh, imagineering, there's learning how to um, enter this altered state of um, awareness. Uh, I refer to it as deep relaxation because it's, it's when you, you learn how to get into that state of deep relaxation that your imagineering really becomes uh, effective in helping to create stronger self-confidence. Um, now, self-confidence is a byproduct of stronger self-belief. So we always, um, the champion mindset, um, it, 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 it can't neglect that we need to make sure that our self-belief system, our internal self-belief system, and a big, you know, many would say that most of our self-belief is at an unconscious level, that it has to be as positive and as strong as possible because from, from self-belief comes our self-confidence. And, and those two together are what affect our performance. Hmm. So there, there's a lot of things that come together be, in, in even other elements in the champion mindset of, of learning to control anger. And, and when that anger energy comes up, learning to use it to help your resolve instead of losing control to the anger. You know, understanding how to perform well under pressure. Uh, you're going to feel the pressure, but you don't let it. You don't let it affect your performance, and, and the list goes on, mm -hmm. Brian. So yeah. you, you know. Well, what's this is awesome. So this is basically you just gave a highlight overview of what I was hoping to go into. So let's just let's go into some of those in more depth one by one. Um, let's start with I think the inner chat is pretty straightforward, uh, but the idea that. And you make it really clear in the book of, look, you need to be able to notice when you're having the negative chit chat going on and then step right in and, and have positive self-talk. But can you just give, maybe give us an example, practically speaking, of what that might be like in our lives, negative, and then how you stop that and then translate it into a positive? Sure. Um, you know, the thing that comes to mind right away um, is uh, when I was learning to fly Navy jets, you know, some of those instructors are intense and, 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 you know, they're in the back seat trying to throw you off and they're trying to throw your, your task focus and your task consciousness. They're trying to rattle you because if you can't keep your focus, and this is the same, whether it be regardless of the type of work that you're doing or situation you might be in, if you're not task focused, if your opponent or, or if an adversary or if a competitor takes that away from you, things can start going downhill. And so a lot of times um, what happens is the self-talk will come in, the, the internal critic, he'll pop up, he or she will pop up when you're beginning to get rattled either by what's going on or what... Uh, what uh, others are injecting into the situation. So one of the simplest things that uh, one of my instructors taught me was the minute it comes up, you say to yourself, cancel, cancel. Hmm. Because our minds in a lot of ways resemble a computer and, and, and we can condition certain, certain responses, certain things 
that uh, are simple to to condition. And if we notice something, some chatter going on that is clearly uh, along the negative, uh, cancel, cancel, and then immediately replace it with I'm fast, I'm strong, I'm good. Whatever it may be that you need at that point to reassure you and to try to take that energy and convert it into confidence as opposed to letting it go down that line of fear and that line of uh, doubt and then and then things start getting out of hand because we didn't immediately begin to take control in that simple way. It, did I get away from your question? No, that was perfect. So then that's that's awesome. So we noticed the negative energy. And then, you know, for those of us who aren't really competing in, a, in an athletic environment, the competitor or the challenge is just life, right? Um, whether it's a boss or a spouse or a child or whatever that might be challenging us, to notice when the negative comes in and then cancel, cancel, or whatever we use to intercept that. And then I love firing off the positive of, of uh, I'm great, this is good, I've got this, you know, whatever it is that keeps us positive. And then I want to I want to hear your thoughts a little bit more on the task focus, you know, and you talk about this a lot in the book too, that it's so easy to get carried away into fear or even excitement and lose the focus on what needs to get done right now. Can you tell us about that a little bit more? Sure. You know, um, again, it, it kind of goes back to some of the intensity of the training uh, in the military, uh, but it can also go to some of the competition in in uh, in different sports, and it can go into the challenges of relationships. You know, um, uh, help me again. Let, 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 let me hear your question yeah, again. Yeah. So just the idea of a task focus and just maintaining. You were saying that the what made me think about that was. You were mentioning the uh, your your naval instructor who was, you know, the guys were just trying to get you rattled from the back seat and take you out of the moment. And so you intercept, cancel, cancel. You bring yourself positive, and then you focus on what needs to get done. Right? Just be right. task oriented. Exactly. And so I need to understand uh, the situation going into it of what it takes to win in this situation. What it takes to be able to say. Um, I'm moving forward in a positive way in this situation. What it takes to beat my opponent. What it takes to not let this discussion turn into a negative uh, anger management type of situation. Okay, so I have to have my my idea in mind of what it will take to win, mm -hmm. and and sometimes compromise, especially with relationships, right? Uh, but. In, in other cases, um, job-related or, or work-related or sports-related, what's it going to take to succeed? So when I have that, though, that in mind, then, then, I have, then I have my task consciousness, my task focus. I can't let anything take that away from me once I know what it takes to get there. I, I, you know, I'm, I, sometimes I use the word win, but again, it needs to be, with relationships, it needs to be win-win. Yep. Okay. So, but, you know, with a boss, it needs to be, um, let me go back and uh, make sure that I, I understand how to do this task. Okay. I know how to do this now. I have past experiences where I've been successful at this, and I start feeding my, my self-confidence and, and my self-belief of being able to do this, yep. and then I stay focused on the task, no matter what is coming in from the side or from over my shoulder or from, uh, you know, from, from another direction. Yep. Same thing with, you know, flying at high speeds with an instructor that's trying to take your task focus away. Well, my, my, my goal is to get this platform over this specific spot at this specific time and then and then totally change direction and course and the mission changes in this way when I get there. So my task focus is always to achieve what I know I need to achieve to win in the situation regardless of the chatter that's going on either from the outside or internally. Mm -hmm. 
And um, a lot of that can be helped with, with prepping beforehand through the practice of uh, imagineering and seeing yourself succeed and stay in task focused under those extreme pressure situations or whatever uh, your situation is. It has a mental rehearsal along the way um, always helps because the brain is then being conditioned to stay task focused despite what's going on. I love it. So let's go there. So let's tell us about Imagineering, um, you know, where that word comes from, what it's, why it's such a big idea and how we can go about doing it. Well, you know, it's a, uh, it, it comes from different situations. People always claim to have invented the word. Um, but the one source that I found that, 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 that touched me was, um, uh, Walt Disney used the term to help his people and he himself used the process to to create to create the reality that they wanted to create so the process is really um, one of using your imagination uh, to help you succeed at whatever is important to you and and you use your mind you know, you'll you'll get yourself in a quiet spot and 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 go through a a, a relaxation uh process so that you're physically and mentally relaxed and then you need to imagine your success and the i should correct that imagine of course, you want to imagine successful outcomes, but you want to imagine yourself performing and doing the things that need to be done to help you achieve that success. And you see yourself in that process and you practice that mentally for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And you do this as a, a, in a consistent way in preparation for the uh, challenges that uh, that either your career or your life or or your sport um, are are basically calling you to 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 reach up and meet, and and imagineering prepares the mind in a way that many would say is as important as the physical training because. There's a part of our mind that doesn't really know the difference between what's real and what's vividly imagined. And, um, and, and once those images and, and feelings of success and, and uh, of, uh, of doing well in the situation are impressed upon the inner mind, of the subconscious mind, in a consistent way through, through practice, through these sessions, then it, it accepts the nature of that subconscious mind. It, it accepts those images and ideas and feelings of success and, and let's say really good performance as being true. Hmm. That's its nature. Yeah. It's a goal striving mechanism, so to speak. And when it says, if this is true, what it does, it says, well, it doesn't say if this is true, it says, this is true. Therefore, these are my actions. The, this is my behavior. These are the things I must be doing in order for that to be true. <laughs> and what happens is we start from the inside to have this volition and volition and this drive and this, this motivation to, to do the things that need to be done that really help us achieve those things that were important to us. Um, that's, that's it in a nutshell. That's really cool. And I want to underscore a couple of things there. One, you made the really fine distinction that, that we're not imagining the outcome per se. We're imagining the performance or the process, the, the behaviors we need to engage in in order to make those outcomes a natural byproduct. And I think I, I mentioned this a lot in my work that I think a lot of times we get tripped up 
and we think that we need to stare at our vision board and imagine all the outcomes, and we forget that those are only going to come if we are able to perform at a really high level. So then what we want to visualize and imagineer, it's not the outcome per se, it's the things we're going to do. And for me, I love to imagine perfect days. You know, I get up, I do this, I do that, then I do this, and I move through that obstacle. And that's kind of my own imagineering and just grooving that pattern of that's like me to have a day like that. Um, so I just, I think that's awesome. I appreciate the way that you shared it. And that, that lends it, it well to, we kind of um, skipped some other stuff that you talk about in your book before you get to Imagineering about the importance of being able to control our physiology. And you referenced this a bit when we were talking about the champion mindset, but can you tell us about why breathing is so important and being able to relax our body and consciousness? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. You know, there's a couple places where, where it becomes important and, um, and just uh, a quick point is I just want to say you've got to do the work. You know, you can't just imagine performing well. While that will help, you also have to do the work because I've heard coaches say, oh, just don't, don't think about making, a, uh, making that basket. Just do it. Well, that's good at a certain point, but that's after you've done the work physically to train the neuromuscular connections they have to be there in order for you to be able to at one point say well let me just get out of my own way yeah. okay so that was kind of something i wanted to add that it's yep. not just imagineering of course yeah i love that and, and, but okay back to your question again one more time yes yeah, so just the importance of controlling our physiology if we want to have mental strength and that champion's mindset um, tell us about the importance of breathing and what that does for us and why we want to master that. Okay, so breathing is a fundamental um, principle in regards to bringing our, ourselves closer to finding that, that place from where peak performance springs forth, that place where we want to... Um, uh, discover how we are in the present and we don't know what really just happened but it happened really well because our training took over breathing brings us back to the present that's one of the most important things when 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 you're when you're a little uh, when you're when your mind is going off and whether it be in a fearful way or you're losing confidence breathing brings us back to the and it's that type of breathing described you know diaphragm breathing and then uh, it brings us back to the present because you begin to focus on your breathing when people wanna when they want to athletes want to say well you know what about meditation okay you know um, you're trying to find that gap of no thought in between your thoughts and you want that gap to get bigger and bigger and bigger and one of the easiest ways to, to clear your mind so that your training can take over or so you can find that, that, that gap for longer periods of time is to focus on your breathing, is to watch your breathing. So it's a core fundamental for learning how to um, take control. Now, um, I, I blend the breathing. Uh, well, breathing sometimes by itself is just that core, that core idea that we need to go back to our breathing right now but when you blend it with other things like the deep relaxation of course and and then the imagineering the three together are are very are very uh are very powerful in helping you uh train the inner mind for success the success that you envision at whatever is important now there's also a a, a point where breathing can be used to um change your state your emotional state if you're in a disempowered state and you're about to compete or if you're in a disempowered state and you're about to have a um, uh, you have to interact uh, let's say you have to get up for public speaking and all of a sudden you've got a bad case of the butterflies we need to be able to change our state so in, 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 in a, and I teach that in the art of mental training and, and we have to also in the other books that are coming up, we, we touch upon it because our state, our emotional state affects the decisions that we make 
and the, and and all the decisions that we make throughout our day and throughout our lives are what create our future decision by decision and so our emotional state affects the quality of our decisions um when it comes to learning how to control your state or change your state breathing is one of the fundamental places that we have to we have to go and and one of the fundamental things that we have to understand uh, with changing your state we'll go into breathing like a champion how would that champion be breathing before his competition and then we add what is the self-talk of that champion right now before his competition and then how is that champion moving his body right now before competition how would he bring those three things together in a series of uh, of, uh, of uh, let's say um, in a chain of focus first how's the breathing of the champion uh, second after a little bit of time what's his self-talk okay now those two are together and then finally how's he moving his physiology his body all three together then change your state and at that point you either are stepping onto the mat or stepping into competition or stepping into your situation whether it be public speaking or whatever you can imagine that you need you are now entering that in an, in an empowered state because beginning with the breathing you were able to begin to take control of your physical state and change it from something that was a little bit out of control and disempowering and creating some thoughts that were not going to help you to a state of now I've become this champion prior to competition and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to own this and I'm going to do well. So breathing is the foundation of m many techniques that we we use in sports psychology. Hmm. So good. I want to recap those three things again that kind of champion state. So imagine again, I love the way you framed it too, whether you're going to go compete in an arena um, or giving a big speech or asking someone out on a date, you know, whatever it is that the range of, of stress is introducing itself into our lives from. Think of your highest self, your champion state, and then how would that version of you breathe? And as you said, lock that in. How would that version of us talk to ourselves? And then how would we move? And then go out and crush it. And you have a great story in the book about the young wrestler who was, uh, you know, thought he knew what he was doing before he entered the arena, and then he was freaking out. And then you worked with him for a matter of minutes to get him to do this stuff and went out and just was was incredible in his performance. But I just love that champion state concept. And then can you just give us a quick primer on how you advocate we breathe? Like what the actual, you mentioned breathing into our diaphragm, but is there a certain count that you like to focus on or depth or anything like that? You know, the way that I was taught from one of my martial arts instructors is to basically draw your breath in through your nose in a relaxed way, drawing it in and letting your diaphragm, your, 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 your lower abs expand out as you draw that air in through your nose all the way down to the bottom of your lungs, really filling up your lungs. Hold it for a second or two and then with your mouth slightly opened and the tongue touching the roof of your mouth right behind your front teeth. Just let the air come out through your mouth. You exhale it and let the diaphragm come in, pushing that air out and then drawing in again. And. Uh, <laughs> You know, as far as a count goes or whatever, it really depends. You know, part of my routine in the mornings uh, is to go, my workout is, is uh, my physical workout is a 20-minute is a intense type of thing. So sometimes they'll say, you do this for 20 seconds, you do this for 20 seconds, and then you do this for 20 seconds, and then you get to rest for 40 seconds. Okay, well, my breathing at that point 
it's pretty much um, I, whatever I need. But I'm still <laughs> using that form. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep. So, so it's like, okay, my, my, my body is screaming for oxygen because that's the way the training is, is designed. And when I get those 40 seconds to, to feed it oxygen, as much as you just want to sit around without any form and, and, and just start breathing, what, what you do then is you just say in through the nose, down, expand the diaphragm. I may only be able to hold it for a second and then boom, I'm forcing it out and then I'm drawing it in again. And that pace is a lot quicker than the pace I'm going to use when I haven't been intense. Uh, physically, and I'm just going into a deep, relaxed state of awareness because I'm going to be doing Imagineering. Mm -hmm. But the form is the same. Mm -hmm. That's you great. Know? Yeah, I totally get that. Um, that's awesome. Thanks for that insight. Super practical and helpful. Two more things I want to talk about before I, I have a couple of questions um, to wrap it up. But the, the, I want to hear about goal setting. So why is goal setting so important? And... I'll leave it at that, and then we'll, we'll talk about kind of the, the pragmatics of it. But tell us why goal setting is so important if we want to be strong mentally. Well, you know, we have to, I teach, and, and some of my teachers that I've been fortunate to have along the way, we have to have a vision, and, and, and we have to know where, where, we're, where we want to go, because if we don't have an idea, if we don't have a dream, then where are we going to wind up? we shouldn't leave that to chance. So, again, remember, it's our decisions that we make along the way that are going to determine what our future is. And, and one of the most important decisions that we can make is what's our dream, okay? Because what's our vision? What do we want? And it's okay that it changes along the way, but hey, let's, let's set something out there that is what we're shooting for because then we can focus our efforts towards even if they're small incremental steps moving towards something that's important to us so once we we have that vision then we should set out to you know lay out a plan on how to get there create this plan now there's a few ways to do it. Some people will just, you know, lay it out. That's, this is my long-term goal. This is, therefore, um, let me get a medium-term goal that helps me achieve my long-term goal. And then let me hit the uh, short-term goals. Let me, let me list those out. And those short-term goals are what help me achieve my, my mid-term goals, which help me achieve my long-term goal. And, and, and they put it together that way, and, that, and that's, that's all good. Now, some people will tell me, but I, I'm not really sure what I want. And, and trust me, that was me, too. And, and even today, I say, well, okay, I, I've done some really neat things. What's next? So, you know, you have to constantly be asking yourself. And, and one of the ways that I think uh, is kind of a, a neat way to approach it is if you just... Um, get a piece of paper, set some, a few minutes aside and clear your mind and say, here I am, my life five years from now or three years from now. Okay. And, and just start writing a little bit about what's going on. Where are you? What have you achieved? Well, what's your living conditions? What, who are the people around you? Where are you living? Uh, what are you doing? You know, just let your imagination go as if you couldn't fail. Write it out, okay? And now, before you know it, you've got four or five paragraphs on one sheet of paper that kind of describe your life in the future, you know, three years, five years, however long you want to stretch it out. But you've laid it out. Now, when you go back and you read that, what you're going to find within that narrative that you've described are things that represent the goals 
that you're going to need to achieve to get there. And you just have that, aha, well, okay, then let me pull this out, and this is something that I need to, along the way, have achieved. That's one of my goals. And then, oh, here's another one, and that's another goal of mine in order to have reached this ideal me five years from now life situation you by by reading through what you just wrote because you're just letting that consciousness just come out and write as if you couldn't fail you'll start noticing the things that you're going to have to achieve along the way pull them out and start looking at is that a long-term goal or is that something i can start on right now is that something that's only going to happen say after i finish college or is that something that's only going to happen after I've gone out there and kept knocking on doors and I've reached this level of sales or, or this level of success in my current career path? Uh, every, every no gets me closer to a yes. You know, I, I work with actors. I, I work with people from all walks of life, and they each have their own, their own set of challenges and, and their goals and you have to kind of say, but what's the end result? Start with the end result and then back up and your goals become clearer as to what you need to do along the way to get to your desired end result. Does that help? Yeah, it totally does. That's awesome. Um, I love that. And just that the importance of having something that fires us up, right? If we want to be strong, we have to have that, that dynamic tension between where we are and our ideal. And I love your exercise and people feeling inspired. Literally, at the end of this, take the three to five minutes, if that's all you want to take, and just, just have fun imagining the next three to five years. You couldn't fail, as Dan said. Um, and just imagine that. Prime your brain for that and then back it up and see, well, what, what, do, I, what do I need to do now to start moving in that direction? Um, I think that's really, really helpful. Love the insight. Obviously, we can talk about that all weekend. Uh, <laughs> but let's, let's go to, at the end of your book, you have a great discussion and uh, not to do a spoiler alert, but I want to talk about the, the number one thing that you're and again, the way Dan wrote his book, it's this great narrative. It kind of reminds me of, of Dan Millman's Way of the Peaceful Warrior with a great mentor who's guiding Dan through his journey, and they, they meet one another at different times. Super cool. And you guys are talking about the most important thing that, that you've learned. Um, and I want you to, can you describe that for us a little bit? Just, you've hit on it at different times here, but just kind of bring us back to that idea of self-belief. Yeah, you know, that's the core and 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 if there's one message that um, that that the book is 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 meant to help you understand and grasp is that the champion mindset it really begins and ends with self belief. You know, if we don't have, and I'm talking about at a deep level, at an unconscious level, and 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 you learn through the book and and even some of these. Uh, other other uh, short courses that are coming out that that I'm 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 finishing unstoppable confidence and and personal best and uh, goal achievement short little um, Kindle books that are going to just give you these foundation they all they you know how to move forward they all have to it comes down to self belief and and the thing that's interesting is that our self belief system is really, and our self-image, is really determined at an early age. And it's, 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 it's accepted as being true by our inner mind, uh, and it affects our achievement potential as adults. And we're running on this program, let's call it, these, this set of ideas, this self-belief system, that because we're human and, and that's basically part of our development, was created by outside influences and our experiences at an early age and our failures at an early age. And there's a part of our, our mind that is always accessing that at an unconscious level and saying, can I do this? Can I really, am I able to achieve this? 
course, that happens without us realizing it. But we're always accessing that. And then it affects our performance on a daily basis at whatever our challenges are. So if there's a message that's strong about the book is that the champions, the champions have a strong self-belief system. And, and they know that imagineering and that process of relaxation that helps bypass the critical mind and let those images and feelings of, of performing well and doing well under the situations that you're facing through repetition, they know that that practice leads to improving the self-belief system. In other words, plowing over any limiting beliefs that may be within that self-belief system that we have at an unconscious level. Once we, we improve the self-belief system, that improves our self-confidence, that leads to improved self that leads to improved performance and achievement. Because now, when the inner mind is having this quick conversation, uh, looking at your challenge, and, and it's telling you, of course you can achieve that, then you set out to achieve that. Of course you can do this then you, you act as if you can do that and you begin to do that because from within, that self-belief system is what drives you. So along the way, you know, there are many lessons and many things that come together to help create the champion mindset and the story and, and the approach that I took based on inspired by true events to try to teach those principles. Uh, and, and towards the end, uh, there's that question because... Trust me, I've, I've seen a lot of things that uh, didn't necessarily work out the way I was thinking they would. And, and instead of giving in, you know, my teacher says, well, okay, he knows that I'm pretty disillusioned with everything at this point, and I'm really feeling somewhat lost at that point. And, and he tries to snap me out of it, and he just says, about all the lessons and all the things that you've learned along the way, you know, think about it. You know, they all come together, but which one do you think I would, I would say, okay, you really got it if you told me this is the one thing that I, I, uh, uh, is most important of all the things, and that's where it, it really... That's the foundation of what I teach because if you if your self belief isn't there, your physical um, abilities will only take you to a certain level. If your self belief isn't there, it doesn't matter how bad you want some if uh, something. If there's something within you that is telling you there's no way that little voice, there's no way you can ever achieve that. What are you thinking? That internal critic. If that isn't reinforced and turned into an empowering self-belief system, um, then that's always going to hold you back. So that's when I kind of, I, I got what he was trying to tell me. It's like, hey, Dan, you're losing your self-belief here. And that's the one thing you can't lose. And that's the one thing you have to always work on. And, and as a coach or, 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 or someone who cares about others, you need to be building them up. You need to help them with their self-esteem. You need to help them with their self-belief and, and, and their self-confidence. Um, and then you learn in, in, in the Art of Mental Training and, and, and in some of these follow-up uh, Kindles that are coming up, you'll learn the method that top performers that pay the big bucks to people like my instructor at one time, Pete Siegel or whatever, and, and you know Tony Robbins, they pay the big bucks to learn these techniques on how to improve their self-belief because that's what gets everything going and moving in the direction of achievement, greater achievements, bigger success, bigger personal um, uh, uh, feelings of fulfillment because you're moving towards what's important to you because you have a dream, you have a vision, you've laid out your goals that'll help you get there, you have that self-belief that moves you in that direction, and then you have all these tools, these mental tools, that when this pops up, oh yeah, let me focus on my breathing, let me come back to the present, let me, 
all these things come together, but the foundation is you got to believe. Hmm, I love it. And I want to ask you two more questions more about what you're up to these days, um, personally and habitually, but just a, a brief kind of mini commercial, if you will. The Art of Mental Training is an awesome place to start with Dan's work. And then Dan shared with me some of the stuff he's working on now, which he's alluded to a couple of times, of these smaller Kindle-based books, which my understanding is they're going to have some audio components as well to really help us get access to that subconscious um, programming so we can actually develop the belief, the uh, you know powerful confidence, and all these other things. So I can't, I personally can't wait to see them, Dan. Um, and for some people, when they listen to this right off the gate, it won't be out yet. For others, if they listen to it down the road, it'll be available. Um, but really excited about that. Do you want to tell us briefly about that? Well, yeah, Brian. You know, the thing is that after the book, the book is really done real well. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by that. Uh, you get feedback. Uh, uh, the majority of it, of course, are very, very positive. And, um, and then people are asking, uh, what, what, where, where do you go from here? And, and that's what got me thinking at one point. Uh, you know, when I was working with Pete, he was quite a, uh, Pete Siegel, he's, he's passed away, and, and, but he was quite, quite the teacher. And I remember a conversation where I was telling him, you know, I can help you get this out there because there's this thing now, it's called the internet, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and he was like, uh, well, wh what do you need me for? You know, I said, everything you've taught me, you know, you have, you, you have this that can be put together and then, and then placed out there. And um, he was uh, saying, do it yourself. And that's kind of what I set out to do. Hmm. Um, now, it, it, what I'm teaching in, in these follow-ups is what people are asking for is, is there anything, another level that I can go to? Because, um, you know, a lot of the sports psychology books, they, they're, they're kind of the same body of knowledge, just, just um, um, being passed forward uh, in a slightly different flavor by depending on who the teacher is. And, and that's all very valid. But one of the things that I, I personally saw that was missing was, was this, this very focused approach to um, success conditioning is what I refer to it as, and, and others like Pete would refer to it as, because what we're trying to do is, and what we're working to do through the process that uh, you'll be shown, is create neural associative conditioning, and, and we're, we're, we're helping build that, that, that self-belief system that is so fortified that... Um, it, it, it drives you in, in, from within to, to achieve and, and perform at, at higher levels closer to your true potential. And, and actually one of the most important things is that, uh, that you learn how to enter that state of deep relaxation. So, you know, that, that training is going to be there. And then the actual success conditioning uh, program, which has the 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 uh, the empowering um, uh, set of ideas that uh, we need to um, make sure become part of us, part of our makeup, so that any limiting and disempowering beliefs that might be lingering there at the unconscious level are, are basically plowed over by these empowering, uh, this empowering set of ideas and, 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 and beliefs that are then going to be um, helping us uh, work and achieve and perform at a level more indicative of our true potential not being held, held back. And, and that process is then is then um, complemented by in the beginning of the book the 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 core principles of what I call the psychology of change. Look, if you understand this and you get it, then from now on 
you should be a lot better and that's not not sabotaging yourself you should be a lot better at saying wait a minute the reason I'm not moving forward is because you know because of this principle and if I only apply this idea correctly then I'm more likely to have this type of result moving forward. So there's some powerful psychology of change ideas that you use on yourself to gain leverage over yourself and your behavior to move in the direction that you want. Yep. And, and that's, you know, it's all, it's all available, but it's not really, it hasn't hit the niche market of sports psychology and um, in my case also martial arts which is where my my current book and where my my books that these other ones will be available in a short period of time if I can put it in front of those types of readers all of a sudden they're going to be able to explore something in a very simple way that the other sport books aren't really teaching and they're going to be able to practice it because in the audio version, that's where the power of repetition really comes in and it becomes part of you. So awesome. really excited to get that out there. Yeah, right on. I'm excited to see it as well. Um, so how can people get, connect with you? What's the best way? Obviously on Amazon, we've got your book. Uh, is there anywhere else you'd recommend us to go? Yeah, in regards to just reaching out, if people wanted to reach out. Yeah, or just you know, learn more about you and your work, etc. Yeah. Okay. So in any case, um, you know, I'm not too much of a social networking guy because of the work <laughs> I do for the government, and yep. they really frown upon it. It's like you need to not be known. They actually kind of look at the work with the book and raise an eyebrow, but that's just... Hey, if you want to be clandestine and top yeah. secret, we'll just send people to Amazon. That's all good. <laughs> no, it's all good. Uh, I have the, uh, the, business, um, the business email, which is uh, gonzo, G-O-N-Z-O, Lane, L-A-N-E, gonzo lane, I think it's gonzo lane media at gmail.com. Perfect. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that's where publishers have found us. You know, the book has been picked up and translated into Russian by the biggest publisher in Russia. The book has been picked up and translated into German by the biggest publisher in Germany. And there's uh, two publishers in Japan that are looking at translations and uh, trying to... Um, uh, so the way those folks and anybody really can reach out to me and uh, is through Gonzo Lane Media at gmail.com. Top secret access here. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I do go there, uh, and then uh, I try to um, to answer questions right if uh, if people have them. And uh, so, in any case, that's that's probably the easiest way. Good stuff. And, well, I appreciate you taking so much time. Again, such a big fan of, of the Art of Mental Training. I'm so excited about the translations and the new work. And um, we'll put links to the book and to the note and my TV episode and all that stuff below. Uh, but, Dan, thank you again so much. Thrilled to be connected and appreciate you and your support. Hey, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the kind words. Uh, your philosopher notes on uh, the Art of Mental Training kind of blew us away. And uh, it's so refreshing when uh, when people uh, really get it, you know, when they see, okay, he's presented this in a simple to understand way, and uh, hopefully they find it entertaining, entertaining, and that was the whole thing. Can I keep you turning pages to where by the time you get done, you're not all tired about it, and, and you kind of say, wow, that was an easy read, but boy, there was a lot there. Let me pop in and out of this book again as I need to because I, there, was, there was some good stuff in there. But the point is we were able to expose you to it, and, and now you realize, wow, there are some really neat, simple things that I can do to help, help my, myself achieve whatever is important to me. And, and when people like you, you know, recognize it, and then and then and then try to you know let others know it just it just makes it all worth it and i really appreciate it 
Right on, man. Well, I appreciate that. And I read it twice and I had the exact experience you described. Read it on my Kindle and I'm like, this is just so good. I got it on my <laughs> normal book, which I never do. And uh, so I had the, exactly the experience you described. I really hope more people, well, I know more people are going to continue to enjoy this. And I hope people listening to this take advantage of it and um, just get their wisdom on. So look forward to connecting again. And uh, thank you once more, Dan. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this Optimal Living interview. Please visit brianjohnson.me for more.